Enoch was a man that had great intimacy with God. Intimacy is such a simple word that can explain so much. It represents the closeness, affinity, and heart-to-heart -heart companionship we can have with another individual. The Bible is full of people who have stood in this place of fellowship and communion with the Lord. From the Old Covenant, and even before, the Spirit was freely given to empower people to obey the Lord. One such example of that kind of deep, intimate relationship with the Lord even resulted in a supernatural occurrence. The book of Genesis gives us the account of a man named Enoch, and Jared lived in 160 in two years, and he begat Enoch, and Jared lived after he begat Enoch 800 years, and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Jared were 960 and two years, and he died. And Enoch lived 60 and five years, and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years, and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 360 and five years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Genesis 5, 18, 24. The scriptures also record two other simple verses about him. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Hebrews 11 to 5, KJV. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Jude 1 14 15 KGV The Bible does not disclose what happened at the point God took him or even after. Still, he must have followed with the same intensity of faith that Abraham showed when he was heading to Mount Moriah to sacrifice Isaac, believing that he would receive him back again. It also may have been the same intensity of faith with which Elijah followed God until the chariots of fire swept him off the earth in a blaze of glory. Enoch leaves us with an understanding that can be the possibility of every believer. For God is not a respecter of persons. Anyone who desires and is willing to pay the cost can equally experience great depths with God. So what does intimacy and walking with God entail? Number one, daily acknowledging that God is who he says he is, believing what he has promised and exercising rock solid faith in his word. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hebrews 11 to 6, KJV. Number two, a determination to follow his leading, no matter what comes, even if attractive or better alternatives may appear. O God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee, my flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land, where no water is, to see thy power and thy glory. So as I have seen thee in the sanctuary, my soul followeth hard after thee. Thy right hand upholdeth me. Psalm 63 to 1 2. 8. The end result of Enoch's life of deep and passionate walk with God was an encounter that was strange but marvelous. He became the first partaker in some sort of rapture. No wonder the scriptures say that God is ready to accomplish supernatural feats for those who love him. But as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man, the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. 1 Corinthians 2-9, KG. Several other benefits accompany those who have committed to a life of intimacy with God. As we look at some of them, it is essential to desire and practically pursue a close walk with God. And he will do in our lives excellent signs because he has created us to show forth his glory to the world. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far, and my daughters from the ends of the earth, even every one that is called by my name. For I have created him for my glory, I have formed him, yeah, I have made him. Isaiah 43-6-7
KG. Walking in close fellowship with God makes us experience His loving care practically. Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Matthew 10 29 30 KG. What a fantastic reality. Even the thought of counting the hairs on a little baby's head will be a daunting task. But to think that God can number all of our hairs is mind-boggling. It's difficult for the human mind to wrap itself around this beautiful thought. Yet that is what God does easily, and He loves to be close to us in every way. Also, intimacy with God grants us profound revelations from Him and opens us up to His secrets. Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions, that they would desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning this secret, that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God for ever and ever. For wisdom and might are his. I thank thee and praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who hast given me wisdom and might, and hast made known unto me now what we desired of thee. For thou hast now made known unto us the king's matter. Daniel 2:17:20, 20, 23, KJV. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will shew them his covenant. Psalm 25, 14, KG. Close fellowship with the creator of heaven and earth is a privilege. It looks a lot like reading tomorrow's news today, as he continually unveils mysteries and gives insight to those who follow passionately and walk closely with him. It is these revelations that give us an advantage, enabling us to take steps to avoid any scheme the enemy may have planned for us. Ultimately, walking closely with him gives God joy. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. Zephaniah 317 KJV what an exhilarating thought that we can cause the heart of our Father to sing. This should make the pursuit of a close walk with Him the deepest desire of our hearts. As we passionately pursue hard after Him, He will keep satisfying us with His presence until we rise up to meet with Him in glory. Intimacy paints the picture of a union so closely knit that each person is actively involved in seeking the joy of the other, and our longing for real intimacy never dies, even until old age. This shouldn't be surprising because we were actually made for relationships that aren't just surface level, but deep and spiritually satisfying. From the very onset, man was made for that intimate relationship with his maker because we are basically human expressions of him, brought forth from him and bearing his breath in our nostrils. The following scriptures explain our source in God. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Genesis 1 26, 27 And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. Genesis 2-7 God has given us the best of himself and desires fellowship with us, not just for himself, but because it is only when we are in a close relationship with him that the full potential he placed within us can be fully realized. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. John 15 to 4, 5. When we are in close communion with him, the best in us starts to have full expression. The first time we see true intimacy is when God exemplified fellowship by coming to meet with the first man, Adam and his wife, Eve, in the cool of the evening in the Garden of Eden. And they heard the voice of the Lord God 
walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Genesis 3-8, KJV. God's love for humanity is hard to put into words and explain because he chose us to be like him. Even with all our frailty, failures, and weaknesses, when we live in his presence according to his design, purpose, and will, it brings pleasure into his heart. For we were created for his pleasure and joy from the beginning. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are, and were created. Revelation 4.11 Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind, and said, Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee, and answer thou me. Where wast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare, if thou hast understanding, who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest, or who hath stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened, or who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Job 38-17 This is why an intimate relationship with us is God's deepest desire. Just like man's highest search and heart longing is intimacy with God, even when he does not realize it. Without God's love in our hearts, most actions can be likened to the thrashing of a captured animal searching for freedom. We will constantly search for that inner harmony and peace that only a close relationship with God can satisfy. But remember, this intimate relationship is easily attainable because He never calls us to do what He has not provided us the grace to do. This is precisely why He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. For it became him, for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons unto glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. Hebrews 2 to 9, 10, KG. Is this the cry of your heart? Do you want to know the Savior and live in the fullness of his blessing each day? You can. David wrote, They who seek the Lord shall not be in want of any good thing. When you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, he forgave you and made you into a new creature. You were no longer standing at a distance from God, but were then able to draw near to him. If you have drifted in your devotion to the Savior and feel you grow more distant each day in your relationship with him, then pray that he will draw you near once again. He knows your weaknesses, and if you tell him that you want him to take control of your life, he will come to you in a mighty way and bring hope and light to your situation, no matter how dark and hopeless it may feel. Isaiah 55-6-7, Amplified Bible. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him for salvation while he is near. Let the wicked leave behind his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return to the Lord, and he will have compassion, mercy, on him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Let us pray. Father, what a privilege I can come into your presence for an ever-increasing close walk and fellowship with you. Thank you, Lord, for all the seen and unseen blessings that come into my life as I become more intimate with you. In the name of Jesus, I ask that you stir my heart to yearn for a deep walk with you so that I can fulfill your glorious purpose for my life. I give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name, I have prayed. Amen.